today on the show, we're going to really get deep on where BYD potentially could be. My name is Paul Barron. This is Tech Path. Thanks for stopping in again today. Joining me from Snowbull Capital is the CEO, Taylor Ogan. Great to have you on the show, man. Thanks so much for having me, Paul. All right, Taylor. So you, you and I are going to get into it today on BYD. Uh, you know, really the, the thing that intrigues me about this company is the fact that they have so many oars in the water. And it's it, very similar to kind of, well, if you think about what Elon's doing with all of his different companies, but BYD, of course, is doing it under one flagship. Talk to me a little bit about where you see, just kind of give our audience a round uh, understanding of where BYD is in the landscape of EV makers in China. Sure. So B, I love talking about BYD. Um, I talk about Tesla a lot, but BYD is really the most interesting company that I think we will ever see in this century. Uh, and a lot, it, the craziest part is a lot of people don't know about it. They don't even exactly. know. Some people know that Warren Buffett owns 10% of it, but that's about it. Uh, and a lot of people know it as uh, just a, a battery maker, but it is a lot more. The, when you compare BYD to Tesla, BYD has built the very framework that Tesla is trying to copy. They have complete vertical integration. They, they're the only automaker in the world that makes its own battery. Uh, they make their own chips, uh, which we can get into, especially right now, that's very relevant. Uh, and, and BYD also makes electric buses, all types of electric vehicles, taxi cabs, uh, and they've been around since 95. So mm -hmm. they were started by a battery chemist, and that's the heart of BYD. It started out as a battery company, and now it's one of the largest electric vehicle manufacturers in the world. So, okay, so when you look at where they are in comparison, because there's been a lot of early, uh, up, or I should say recent upstarts with the likes of Neo, even Xpeng, uh, to a certain extent, um, how do they compare and line up? I mean, because you don't, you hear more about Neo, but ironically, the reason we asked you on this show was the response to our video on BYD. Actually, BYD, when we did a, a, a Shanghai Auto Show release of one of their recent vehicles, uh, their SUV, the uh, also our analysis breakdown on our uh, on our show recently. The the I was just very impressed with the amount of uh, people that wanted to learn about it. So when you look at them compared to what Neo, Xpeng, um, and many others, you know the litany of of Chinese uh, EV makers is getting longer and longer by the day. How do you think they're going to be able to kind of correct the position? Are they always going to just be one of those companies that's kind of the company behind everybody? Or do you think, think they're going to break out and become the leader there? So the, what's great about BYD is that it's so unknown in the Western world. If you don't speak Mandarin Chinese, it's really difficult to find a lot on BYD. Even finding the financials can be difficult. They only recently started making their annual report in English. So there are a lot of people who it makes sense to them, this company. Okay, they make batteries, they make electric vehicles of all types. Uh, they, they also make face masks now. Uh, they, they make uh, the iPads pretty much, the, almost every component in the iPad. Uh, they, they, they have, they've been around forever, but so many people still don't know about them. And, and it's a, I mean, their market cap is what, $63 billion and mm -hmm. Tesla is 10 times that, more than 10 times that. Uh, Neo today may even surpass BYD's market cap. And BYD sells more electric vehicles than all of the rest of them, except for Tesla, almost combined. And they've been doing it for a long time. Uh, they actually made one of the first electric vehicles ever in this century. Uh, so they, BYD, it's a lot of people want to know more about BYD, and it is very difficult to find information in English on BYD. And that's, there, there's sometimes a, a really great part about that in that it's undervalued relative to some of these other uh, startup EVs that are now publicly traded, but it's also not listed uh, in the US. So they have, right. they're listed over the counter in the ADR, BYDDF, BYDDY, which by the way, a lot of people get confused. You can own any of them, don't buy BYD, well, uh, don't buy Boyd Gaming. That's ticker BYD. That's not right. what we're talking about. Yeah. That's BYDDF. And then BYDDY is just times two, uh, whatever BYDDF is. 
And uh, yeah, so sometimes people, they, they talk to their brokers and they say, I've never heard of this company or I don't know how to buy it. Oftentimes you can buy either BYDDF or BYDDY as a foreigner um, in the United States you know, it, it, they do make, they're trying to list. That's the thing that they're, they're mm -hmm. talking about listing. Uh, but Neo, Xiaoping, uh, Li Auto, Tesla, they're all listed either on NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. So yeah. that's a, a disadvantage that BYD has that we'll see what they do with that. But uh, that alone is so much of this uh, that they're not on CNBC. You, you'll never hear them mention it, even though they're the giant in the room. So it's there, there are a lot of people, yeah, who just they, they want so badly to understand this company. And it's really difficult unless you, again, speak Mandarin or you really dig for it. And digging for it's pretty fun. I can imagine. I got a chance to listen to their CEO uh, do a breakdown on kind of their global expansion, expansion plans. And I was very impressed with her. I mean, she really kind of broke out uh, a very, I think, systematic way of how they're going to go to market in Europe what their plans are there for battery production, especially in, in China, which is uh, pretty impressive when you look at the amount of batteries that they're capable of producing right now. And then kind of their whole plan of going into a lot of interesting directions. I want to jump into a couple of things uh, this year, uh, or, or this, this topic, is their profit doubled this year? Why do you think the stock has not responded? Well, so, I mean, they, they have, right around 18 uh, percent gross margin that's higher than all the rest except for tesla has uh, mm -hmm. 21 percent gross margin uh they're, they're maintaining high margin they the stock is not the stock trades if you if you watch how byd stock trades it trades if tesla if, if byd starts up in a day then and tesla is trading down then it, they just they follow each other and they shouldn't. Yeah. I, I really hope that they, you know, I wish that they wouldn't, but they do. And so, uh, yeah, BYD is, has has performed very well. Uh, even their most expensive car is now their best-selling car. So mm -hmm. they they have a lot that riding for them, uh, but a lot of it is just they get bogged down by the Chinese market, by just the right. greater Chinese market. Even if Alibaba is trading down, Tencent's having a bad day then that will that will drag BYD down. So they need to have their own kind of uh, they need to be more independent in how, how the trade, uh, how the stock trades. Uh, but yeah, they, they, their financials are incredible. And not only that, but they also disclose more than any company I've ever seen. Xiaomi really? is pretty close, but they disclose that you can see every single line item that you could ever want. And, and so that actually, once you find the financials, it's really awesome uh, because they're a totally transparent company, really, truly. And, and that woman that you were speaking about, uh, that's, that's the head of BYD. I'm guessing it, you're talking about Stella Lee. Uh, and that's yes. the head of BYD North America. She's America. pretty much number two yeah. at BYD. She is the most impressive businesswoman I've ever met, ever will. She is, uh, she is awesome. And she, although... U.S. sales are less than 2%, even less than that, uh, for BYD Company Limited as a, as a you know, the parent company. Uh, the, their, BYD's role in the United States is really strategic. Uh, mm -hmm. They're the only Chinese vehicle maker that has ever had a factory uh, in the United States, in Lancaster, California. Uh, yeah. But again, they don't sell a lot of buses. They're getting ready for something big. And that's something else that excites me. But Stella Lee, she is she has the vision. And something that I like about BYD is is that they when they have a product ready, then they show it to everyone. They mm -hmm. don't do this what Tesla does and Neo and Xiaoping. They don't yeah. say we're trying to have this product yeah. and hopefully we can get there and hopefully it can cost as much. BYD, they they're just very very regimented. When when they have yeah. a product, they're going to bring it to market within five days, even sometimes uh, okay, of, the, so of the announcement. You mentioned you think something big is in the wings here. What, are you thinking more manufacturing here in the U.S., uh, kind of taking an edge on uh, ramping up? Where, where do you think they're going? Because my understanding is it's still more in the transportation side of things for buses and alternative vehicles outside of the passenger car. Yeah, so for, for right now, that's the, the commercial vehicles are really the only way that BYD wants to have any kind of role in the United States. Right. That 
obviously there are no Chinese electric passenger electric vehicles in the United States. There actually are a few BYDs in, in Chicago. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, he loves the company. He actually has the only BYD Tong uh, in the United States. In the US? Uh, it's, huh. his, like, it's his daily driver. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, but but there's there's no one else. Neo Neo's just today. You know, there's a lot of talk about Neo going to Norway, and that's a, that that'll be a big test market for them. These these EV companies out of China, they're it's it's like a like a standoff. They're they're kind of waiting for who who's going to move first, and then they'll all follow. Uh, mm. But what BYD has said for years, and it was ready to move to the United States before. All, any of these companies even existed. They were ready, uh, but they, all of them want, they know they only have one shot at it. And if they don't right. do the US market right, it, it's the end of Chinese EVs because Americans don't know anything about Chinese cars in general. We, we A lot of people in the United States think that uh, Chinese products are inferior and cheaper. Uh, when it comes to technology, that's not true anymore. China went from mm. imitator to innovator and BYD even says with their Haunt, again, their top selling car, it's a right. beautiful car, by the way, uh, that car, they said that they had developed that 10 years ago, now 11 years ago, and it, they just, the market wasn't ready for it. They have hmm. a car rumored that can go with a lithium iron phosphate battery, zero to 60 in less than two seconds. And they just, they, they can develop these things because again, they're so vertically integrated, but they, it doesn't mean that they need to bring it to the US market right now. They, China has a strong sense of urgency uh, for curbing pollution. That's the focus of all of these companies. Now, if they just right. sell a few units in the United States, sometimes that can be enough for it to spiral out from there. And in China, people say, oh, that car is being sold in the US and it's very popular or whatever. Uh, there are people reviewing it. Then I want to buy it. So that mm -hmm. seems to be more the strategy. I'm not hyper focused, although I'd love to own one of. I, I currently own a Tesla. It's the best car I can buy in the United States. But if I were to live in China, there are a dozen almost cars better than Tesla's top of the line car. So right. that's it's again, it's it's frustrating that I can't actually drive the. And, and I've been to China many many times, and so I, I do. Uh, I'm actually moving our company to China. Uh, for a few years because we have to be there we can't just sit on the sidelines and just watch weibo videos and stuff we, right. we have to actually drive <laughs> these things and experience and it's not just that it's just chinese technology in general uh but yeah but yeah i th so i i would hope that other people can for a second just remove their own uh bias or or uh desire to own these cars and oh you know i would i would totally buy this or i wouldn't buy this car the chinese auto market is massive and the government is also, you know, it's subsidized as well. Uh, and there's, a, again, a, a strong sense of urgency. So yeah, that's, I like to focus with the Chinese companies in China and it, it just, it would be great if they expand to Europe and the US, Europe is first, US is uh, maybe an, after, uh, an afterthought for them for right now. Yeah, I think, that, I, I do think though, that with where we see today's, you know, consumer, their reaction towards EVs are much more open in the sense of they really want to solve the problem that you know our EV and the infrastructure that we're trying to do here in the US is is really on track to do. But if you look at what's happening in Europe, Norway, uh, pretty much any country within the European uh, area, much more adoption percentages, much more mass appeal toward EVs. So I definitely see that over over time, maybe it's the next two, three, five years, uh, here in the U.S., I think we're going to see uh, maybe a new appetite for cars from pretty much any country that has done it right. You know, so if you're winning, I think so too. And if, if you're, you know, if you're really bringing a great car to market, because there's an innovation uh, point that we're at right now, and I think a lot of people are seeing it, and including myself. I was a nice driver for years, and you know, jumped into. We drove uh, a Model S uh, five years ago. I felt like at Tesla just wasn't there at the time. And I was not a Tesla lover until really early last year, finally went in, started driving the Model 3, then I got the Model Y. Man, I went all in and I was like, this is, this is the future. If there are other companies out there that have this capacity in terms of quality, performance, 
you know, all of the, the factors and the keystones of a great EV. This is the next generation for sure. So I think people might be a bit more open about, you know, looking at those kinds of, of vehicles as they start to break open in the U.S. market. Let's talk about their e-platform 3.0. So it debuted at the Shanghai Auto Show with some impressive performance figures, including, according to the company, up to 600 miles of range. Uh, this was likely based on a Chinese testing cycle. Do you think that e-platform is something very special, or do you feel like this is going to be one of those things that really is more in the range of where Model S is now, 400 plus miles of range? Or what are your thoughts on that? Tesla should be shaking in their boots right now at oh. that e-platform 3.0 uh, we've never seen anything like it. it came out of nowhere it was not expected and typically yeah. rumors spread a bit uh more in china than they do here uh that that came out of nowhere and mm. the, i mean two zero to 16 2.9 on just that platform uh a, a thousand kilometers of range uh if if that's nedc then even at, at the most uh let's let's be really conservative here Let's say that that's 30% less. We're still talking about the highest range electric vehicle uh, ever produced. So yep. these are, and, and it's also an LFP uh, battery pack. So mm. BYD Blade is really the heart of, BYD as an entire company right now, I'd say. Uh, that, that technology, they and others say, is two to three years ahead of any competitor. And they, they keep innovating that. The whole industry last year, uh, 12 months ago, was moving away from lithium iron phosphate batteries, LFP. Now, now let and me jump in BYD, here for a second on LFP, yeah, sure. because our, when you say ahead of any competitor, you're talking about someone like a CATL. Are you thinking yeah. also in the framework of where Tesla's going with their 4680? Yeah, so the 4680, it, I was very surprised at battery day when I saw that they were 4680 was just going to be a high nickel high energy density, high performance battery. Uh, they are, they're also struggling making it right now. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a reason there's still only one company in the world that makes cars that makes their own batteries. And yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to scale a, a car factory than it is to scale a battery factory. You also have to worry about the supply chain and everything. And then safety, it, Tesla never uh, said anything about the safety of that cell or the cyclability. Mm -hmm. And those right. are two things that are really important to batteries. And so BYD already has a battery that is the safest battery, can pass the nail penetration test, mm -hmm. which is they call the Mount Everest of, of battery testing. You can literally stick a nail, penetrate a nail through the cell, and there's no th that simulates thermal runaway. Uh, and and so there's no there's no possibility for a, a, a vehicle fire. BYD has never had, and it's been around since 95, it's been making EVs for over almost 15 years now, never had a battery fire. Interesting. It's, there's one time where a, a Porsche 911 crashed into it, or no, it was GT3 going uh, 105 miles per hour, and, and they ended up discovering that the carpet burned. The battery never exploded and never caught fire. Interesting, yeah. So that's so impressive. Whereas with Tesla, in the last two months, there have been eight vehicle fires. And these aren't just, sometimes they're just, in the middle of their part in, in the parking lot or your driveway, just random thermal runaway. So that's really scary. And and a lot of people in China focus on battery safety. Even taxi drivers in China, they know the chemistry of the cathode of these batteries because safety is they're hyper obsessed with safety over there. Right. And for good reason. So they've their the safety is number one for BYD. But back to the back to Blade, yeah, it passes the nail penetration test. It also uh, just last month. They came out of nowhere again, and they drove one of their own uh, semi trucks, which everyone talks about Tesla semi. BYD has had electric semi trucks for years, uh, and they already have partners with Budweiser and all the companies that Tesla's hopefully going to have partnerships with. BYD already has that in the United States and everywhere else. So they took one of those. This one it was actually a dump truck, and they drove it. They loaded up with weights, and they drove it over the Blade battery pack. And, and I was in disbelief. Uh, no one had, I, that's not even a known thing to test for. Uh, and so uh, then they, then they with, in the same shot, they screwed that, that battery into a Han and they drove off. And it was awesome. <laughs> uh, but but they, they're just doing things that no one is coming yeah. close to. 
and it's with a relatively boring battery. So again, last year, the whole industry was moving away from iron phosphate batteries because they're slow and poor energy density and, and they're heavy. Uh, and But now every, with Blade and then Cattle CTL right after, two months later, came out with their CTPs, the Cell to Pack LFP, which right. is really impressive. And that's, uh, you know, the Cattle's LFP batteries are being used in, in Chinese, made in China Model 3s. Uh, and, and so those batteries, those two batteries shifted the entire industry back to LFP where, mm. and, and there's no cobalt in the cathode. That's pretty important. No one likes child right. labor. A big deal. Uh, yeah. There's no, yeah. And, and they're also prismatic. So cylindrical, Tesla's really the only, anyone at scale still producing cylindrical batteries. They're mm. laptop batteries. The 18650s yep. and the Model S and X, and then the 2170s in the Model 3 and Model Y, it's, they're, cylindricals are better because you can wind them and so you can mass produce them easier, uh, but there are inherent disadvantages. Uh, they're also circular in a square pack. So, yeah. uh, and then there are things like, like sell to pack and that Tesla is trying to maybe do with 4680 and BYD just, they've done sell to pack. They're all, they, they now do sell to chassis. So why that's do, where this, this e-platform 3.0. Yeah. So why do you think that we have not seen uh, companies like Tesla, I know that BYD just did a deal in Europe where they are going to be, become a battery supplier to an OEM. Um, why do you think we not, we're not seeing more deals like this with such a resilient and successful battery architecture with, you know, guys like Rivian, Canoe? I mean, you could go down the list here in the U.S. in terms of, I mean, Arrival just did a deal uh, for with Uber. You've got all these new age EV companies that are going to need batteries. They're not at scale right. yet. So why wouldn't be, why wouldn't BYD be just going in and picking all of this low hanging fruit off to develop some really good relationships? So BYD wants to go after the, the biggest fish in the sea and they want to supply them. When, when BYD introduced Blade last year, around this time last year, uh, they said that every single OEM, small and large, and the entire industry was calling them nonstop because they yep. wanted they wanted this battery because it's a prismatic battery. It's not cylindrical. It's it's mm -hmm. cheaper to produce. BYD already has the cheapest battery on the market by far. At the pack level, it's less than 85 US dollars per kilowatt hour. No one comes close to that. And wow. and so that's why BYD, when they when they put those batteries in their own cars, that's how they're able to sell these cars. They, they it only some of their cars they make for seven, eight. 9,000 US dollars and they sell them yeah. for 14, 15,000 US dollars. It's just unheard of. They went the, from literally the bottom up. So now they yeah. started making the cheapest cars ever and now they're making higher end cars. Whereas every other EV startup is going from the top down. Yeah, yeah top and, down. And so that's, it, it also shows BYD's uh, vertical integration. So with, why, why aren't more people knocking on their door? Well, they are knocking on their door. But the big, with this, back to this e-platform, uh, it's Toyota. Toyota sold mm -hmm. nine and a half million cars last year. Toyota yep. isn't married to any battery company right now. And this e-platform 3.0, on that slide at the Shanghai Auto Show, they had Toyota's logo up there. And that, that. Was, yep. that was a big deal. But then Toyota, on their first quarter earnings, they had a slide uh, with their new platform, uh, where that's going to be 15 models EV models. And again, they, they haven't said they, they kind of are with Panasonic for the plug-in, uh, for some of their plug-in vehicles, but that's nothing really that is their focus. Uh, but with, they don't, they don't have anyone else. Uh, they're, they're kind of waiting as well with BYD. And interestingly, just a few years ago, I always, for years, I've been asking BYD, who do you see as your biggest competitor? Cause I always thought it would be Tesla. The, every single person I've asked at BYD, in the past has said Toyota. And now that they're partnering with Toyota, Interesting. That, <laughs> that is awesome. So Toyota is the big fish here. Uh, they also are now partnered with Ford, the Ford uh, JV in China, with Chang'an. They, they've partnered with uh, Daimler for years. They've had joint ventures with them. And then some of these other EV startups and AV startups, uh, they, they're in bed with everyone. So mm -hmm. the, the only company that they're really apparently refused to talk to is Tesla. Tesla insulted them years ago, Elon Musk on a Bloomberg interview in like 2011, 2012. They haven't forgotten that. 
And, and Elon Musk laughed and he said, have you seen their cars? When asked if, if he sees BYD as a, as, a, as a competitor. And that was insulting to them. So they won't answer Tesla's calls. Uh, I don't know where that goes from here, especially if Tesla can't produce their 4680 at the scale or even at the form factor that they that they aspire. Uh, but yeah, everyone else is really they're 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 licking their lips, and BYD is just sitting at the top of their throne, picking whomever they want. Uh, yeah. So they're they're positioned really nicely there. Look, you mentioned you're mentioning Toyota a lot because I you know the scenario that we looked at Toyota seems to me that they've done a bit of a head fake here. Um, one kind of throwing everybody uh, a, a kind of an understanding that they're not interested in the EV space, obviously with their hydrogen research, their um, the claim here in the US that they tried to slow down EV adoption, uh, many things that kind of indicated. And then uh, here recently, they've kind of dropped the mic on saying, listen, we're all in and we're we're getting ready to really make a move on the EV space. Do you feel like this was a planned attack for Toyota to try to position into the marketplace because everybody was rushing to market so quickly? I think that Toyota knows their their power here. Uh, Toyota also wasted billions of dollars on hydrogen. So yeah. uh, they, they largely abandoned that almost entirely. Uh, mm -hmm. But they made a mistake there. And when they could have partnered with a battery company much earlier on uh, and but again, this they so they have uh, Toyota has a, a joint venture with BYD. Uh, it's the BTET, and that's that's a complete joint venture with BYD. But then they also have the BZ models, and that's where 15 models, uh, the uh, right. Beyond Zero, is what it stands for. Yeah. And that that's open game. And so if you if you look at it, sounds like this ePlatform 3.0 is just for Toyota, but they say exactly. well, so yeah. all of BYD's vehicles are going to have this. Now Han is going to have this, Tong is going to have this, all their models are going to have this new platform, and they also say we're opening it up. So and it seems like the first company also on that slide uh, was was Didi Chushin, the largest ride hail company in the world, uh -huh. and they do more rides every day than Uber and Lyft do globally combined. So this is a massive company. Again, a lot of people in the U.S. haven't heard of it, but this is if, if BYD can now and there's another model that maybe later we can talk about because it's the coolest, coolest thing ever that no one's talking about beyond all of this. Uh, but but they have partnerships. They're ready for anyone who will work with them at a large enough capacity, because I'd love to see BYD packs and Rivian's. It would make so much sense yeah, because Rivian would of be just the, target. the performance they have and also cold weather, hot weather. Uh, but but Rivian's too small. And you see the same exact thing with LG Chem. Rivian mm -hmm. was working with LG Chemical in with their, their batteries in the testing, and then they moved to Samsung. Uh, because LG Chem said, for cylindricals, if we're gonna keep producing these cylindricals, sorry, but Tesla's a big enough customer right now, we have to focus on them. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like uh, BYD is gonna be in a position to scale? Because I mean, you're, you're essentially talking about a company in China, if you think about this, a company sitting in China right now that at one has what appears to be a very strategic relationship developing with Toyota, the number one car maker in the world. Um, number one car sales, uh, the penetration opportunity, the dealer network, the global brand presence, all those th type of things. Then they have these deals uh, developing in Europe with a lot of the German automakers and many of those kind of going also all in on uh, electrification. So you've got VW pretty much now is all in, Volvo's somewhat all in, Mercedes is really making a big play at it. BMW though lagging has come back and kind of started to reposition their game. With, with all of that happening, because you've got really what could be BYD having the one solution, the C platform, the Playtech, how do you think that's gonna play out on scalability for them if they truly do partner up with Toyota? Do you think Toyota is gonna be like a Tesla to them, just consume all their production? So it's, it's a really good point. How, how do you scale something that seems to be so customizable? That's right. the beauty of BYD. They make every single, it, it's, I like to, I'm not supposed to call it a skateboard, but I call it a skateboard. I like Rivian has, has called it their platform a skateboard. And that's what Amazon's delivery trucks and everything are sitting on top of. Uh, but, but it pretty much is a skateboard that 
everyone else, they can just put their shell on and, mm -hmm. and that's their vehicle. BYD can make, they can cater, they can tinker with different chemistries and to make a, maybe a garbage truck versus mm -hmm. a high performance car with the same technology and resources, just different ratios uh, yeah. and how they, how they, Therm, the thermal management in that pack may differ. And that's stuff that, that BYD can do. They make the, the IGBTs in, you know, the chips that largely are part of this, this uh, auto shortage uh, right now. And they make, they make the BMS, the battery management system. They make the, obviously the battery cells. They do everything. They make all of it. The inverters, the electric motors, they even have their own tire company. So they can make whatever anyone wants. So in terms of scaling that, it's very easy for BYD to scale. Right now, we have them around 100 gigawatt hours of uh, deployed capacity for just Blade battery. They've also mm -hmm. said we're not gonna produce any other battery uh, starting from March on, except for Blade, except it seems like the, the Mustang Mach-E uh, in China will use the remainder of BYD's NMC cells. But everything else is, is blade, 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 blade. And they can scale faster than anyone. Their cost per gigawatt hour is a fraction of what anyone else's is. And mm. it's because they've been doing this forever. Oh, so man. if I have my money on anyone to scale, it's BYD. Yeah. Last, last topic for BYD, and that is their, their new open platform, as I understand. Uh, open source platform they're looking to make available to other makers. How do you see this furthering the mission for what they're trying to achieve? Because this seems to me very uh, philanthropic here of, of opening up your platform yeah. to let uh, the rest of the OEM world kind of catch up here. Where do you see that going? Yeah, so they're, they're, they are the Android to Apple here and Tesla mm -hmm. being the Apple. And again, Tesla sure. used to say, well, we're gonna open source all of our patents. And then they go around and sue everyone who actually steals their patents. So, uh, they, BYD really, they just want to make as many vehicles, uh, they want to mobilize as many humans globally as in, in a responsible and, a, and electrified way as possible. So they don't, for, in terms of open sourcing a lot of this, that's actually, I was surprised because they broke away with Huawei. And Huawei is obviously a giant in China. And I right. thought Huawei, because Huawei is trying to get into the automotive space a bit, and they again came out of nowhere and just they, they said, we're just if you want to have your platform sit on top of ours. And when you talk about autonomous vehicles, it's that that's really exciting because this whole thing I, for, for years, I've said I will make so much money if I can pick the winner on vehicle to vehicle V2V or V2X vehicle to everything or V2E right. uh, technology. We're basically with autonomous vehicles. They have to talk to each other. If you have a Volvo and a Toyota and uh, a Nissan, uh, and they all have difference. How do they? How do those cars know which lane they should go in? And, and is that car going to break right now? And what is that car yeah. actually seeing? And that kind of technology, there's no one, there's not a company that has that. I believe that that will be a standardized technology, by the way, by yeah. countries, which is really exciting because that means there's only one winner for maybe some countries. And, and BYD came out first with this. And mm we thought it was going to be years before a real compelling V2V system would, would come onto the market and BYD just announced it. And you won't yeah. find any articles on this in English. Like that's again, part of the frustration sometimes with this, but it's so exciting because you can have a DD and it, you could have an Uber, you could have a Waymo, you could have any of these, these automakers and the, their, their system, their own autonomous system is compatible with the, the BYD platform. So it's a really talk about scale. That's very compelling for any OEM. Yeah. Okay, so you dropped some bombs here. I mean, you, mainly you're saying their battery tech is, is kicking it's basically world-class. Uh, Tesla's paying, playing catch up here, especially at the rate and the cost uh, per gigawatt hour that they're producing at, which is insane. Uh, that in itself kind of separates the pack. They're opening up their platform. They've got a deal with to Toyota, who's the largest car manufacturer. It seems like they have kind of put together a whole set of chess pieces that they are just now getting ready to deploy. 
And if you had to say, where is BYD going to be at in a year or maybe two, what are you thinking in terms of the growth of the company? Where, where do you think they will be in terms of position? So this is not investment advice. Uh, <laughs> by the year 2050, I believe... Whoa, whoa, 2050? The largest... Yeah, yeah. No, 2050? I, 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 by 2050, I think BYD will be the largest company in the world. Uh, in the next few years, BYD... BYD last year, uh, when this whole EV rush was happening, mm -hmm. it was only up 430%. So that's <laughs> a third of what 400. Neo was. And Neo doesn't even make right. their own cars. They don't make their own right. batteries. They don't make right. their own chips. So yeah. Yeah. like it's it, it's there's something that was nothing for BYD. Last year, BYD is trading this time like $6 a share. Now it's uh -huh. at $19 a share. It was yeah. as high as like $32 a share. Uh, I don't, I don't want to put any price targets out right now, but... Uh, when this thing takes off, when people really realize it, and I will say a lot of the fault on why it hasn't taken off as it should is, is on BYD. Their, their PR team in the English speaking world is largely non-existent. They're getting better. Uh, their IR team, it's difficult to, to call them. Whereas in China, by the way, they have an IR, an investor relations hotline. You can call at any time, you know, Monday through Friday during mm -hmm. the trading hours and ask them anything and they record it and you can read the transcripts and we learn a lot from that uh, right. but in the US it's 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 largely non-existent so you have to do your own research which again yeah. is kind of fun for some people uh, but i mean it's it's difficult though to find information on this and so, so when they think, improve that do you think it's going to be a breakout year next year the year after what are you thinking i think 2023 first half 2023. of 2023 mainly because uh, it, of the deals happen. with toyota or their own production i think as largely based around batteries uh when a lot of people a lot of companies realize that turns out they can't make their batteries like they thought they could maybe quantum scape mm -hmm. their solid state battery technology isn't that great maybe tesla's yeah. 4680 what if they can't do the dry coated electrode uh, yeah. Well, that right there, it wouldn't even make sense to produce the batteries, really. And at yeah. the end of the day, they're just producing those for high performance vehicles. Let's talk about the masses here. Let's yeah. talk about the taxi cabs, the robo taxis. Those are the cars that really mobilize people. And those cars are really only produced by one company. There's a reason that BYD can produce these, can sell cars at $14,000 and still have a 20% profit margin on it because they make every component of it. Yeah. So there's when people realize that, oh, yeah, well, the batteries, it's they're not really coming along. And by the way, BYD says that they will have solid state batteries in cars 2023. So that wow. that car, the X Dream that they unveiled, beautiful looking mm -hmm. car, by the way, at yep. the Shanghai Auto Show, uh, that we think will have that solid state battery in it. And yeah. then we're talking, I mean, BYD is already at the point where we don't need solid state technology. So how much lower can we go? Are we going to, there is a theoretical minimum, but mm -hmm. is it going to be $45 per kilowatt hour at the pack level? Maybe it could go lower. So there's only one company that is even in biting territory there. Yeah. And that's yeah. BYD. So I think well, that's when gonna it takes change off, the, that's going to change the entire planet. I mean, you, when you get into those kind yes. of costs per kilowatt hour, you have displaced fossil fuel use for vehicles. It's, I mean, it just, it would make no sense for you to go that route because a combustion engine car would be 30% higher, 20% higher, you know, a, a new vehicle. So EV wins, that's gonna be, and that will be it's the not, adoption layer that everybody's been looking for. Right, and it's not even just electric vehicles and it's not even just electric cars or buses. It's, BYD does SkyRail. They have a thing called SkyRail. You can look it up if, if you've never heard of it. And it's, that Tesla's trying, it's, it's easy to compare to Tesla because Tesla is so badly trying to do everything that BYD has, is, has already been doing. But Skyrail is this above ground uh, monorail uh, that's already a level five, the first 5G connected vehicle ever, the first level five vehicle, granted it's on rails, but, uh, and they're, they're selling, they're starting to sell those, they're, they'll have about a dozen by the end of the year. So those so are that's their boring one, company, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's except it's above ground. And so it's yeah. much cheaper. That's for tier three and four and five cities in China. Uh, and that's that's just a really impressive uh, thing. That's uh, one third. It takes one third of the time than a traditional subway and one fifth of the cost. 
So yeah. they have that. They also are doing, and again, they don't mess around with things that maybe, you know, just for fun, like BYD shut down all their factories last year. And my colleague has a, an awesome thing on, on uh, Twitter about this, where the, the story of how they, how they made masks, they shut down every auto factory, every electronics factory they had, and they just made surgical masks. And within less than a month, this is before any cases were known in the United States, they were the largest mm -hmm. mask producer in the entire world. They went from pr never wow. producing a mask to being the largest. They had the CEO yeah. of the company, the CFO of the company, the chairman of, of the uh, board, the secretary of the board. They were on their hands and knees making masks, fixing the mm -hmm. machines to make the masks and everything. So it's, it's an incredible story. Uh, so they do that, but they also, they also are in energy storage. They've been in energy storage longer than they've been in electric vehicles. Uh, they're in photovoltaics. They have one of the highest energy efficient uh, photovoltaic cells on the market. And, and so that's why if you look at the comps, you look at a company like say solar edge that really just does inverters and everything. And that's, we can start, you start adding the sum of the parts and this company right. is not a, a, a $63 billion company. I mean, this thing is, uh, it's ready for a breakout and it's been ready for a long time, but they're doing yeah. things that this company truly, 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 they, they've trademarked the official sponsor of mother nature. And for good reason, this company, I feel good owning this stock because they really care about improving the environment at whatever yeah. cost. And sometimes that's your build your dreams for sure.